really surprise a lot of people. Uh, and I, and like you said, I, I would not be surprised if this one goes to five game stacks. Well, here we go. Norway, France. Somebody gets a date with the Netherlands coming up. Loser gets Great Britain with their tournament life on the line as Fairy Peak will make the initial save. And hey, how about Norway doing exactly what they have to do? Coming out of the gates, firing, and just getting on top of France early, not letting them get comfortable. Problem is, Fairy Peak broke the zone, got a shot off. We'll see if Kadop and Alpha can get the offense going. Fairy Peak has been phenomenal in this tournament. The other two, less so, except, you know, Kadop early in the tournament had so many Ooh, goals, oh, but he's pulled off. That was almost the, the doink of the century for an own goal that I've seen from Seep. <laughs> oh, that was an absolute screamer. But you talk about how impressive the guys on France let, uh, have been. Let's talk about the guys on Norway as well, because Inferno and Fireman Jonas have been out here scoring and being the top two highest rated players on Octane uh, throughout the uh, the tournament so far. Yes, they had a bit of a stat, uh, stats padding game uh, against uh, South Africa, but bear in mind, GB had that game yep. as well, as did the Czech Republic, but it was Norway who came out and top in that. Yeah, 30 goals combined between Inferno Ooh. and Fireman Jonas, but there's Kadop getting involved. He was so quiet in the series that France had to win against Germany, and now Kadop has been awakened. But it was Fairy Peak doing all the work, just beating every Norwegian player in that corner, and Fairy Peak has been an absolute lightning rod for this French squad. Obviously Alpha coming to life and now everyone's stepping up. Oh, I thought Ferry was going to get to that, but Inferno, a goal from nowhere. Uh, hello? France? Hello? France? Maybe? Defense for France. <laughs> <laughs> Defense. <laughs> Goalkeeper. Well then, one all. That is amazing. Well done, well done. All right. 3.30 and counting as France have to find another answer for a goal out of Norway. I'll be honest, I expected France to do not quite what Norway did to South Africa, but pretty darn close. And we're early on, but Norway has absolutely brought it to the French. Yes. It's not going to be any walk in the park. Cer oh, certainly not. These guys have uh, come to play, and uh, there are going to be no pushovers against this French squad because France, they've not been playing as well as I thought they would and Alpha misreading that, taking Fairy Peak out of it. He tries to go through his teammate to save this one, but Fairy Peak, he's not see-through. You cannot pass through him, you shall not pass. And the goal goes straight past him. The Super Sieb, the Super Sub, Norway in front. Former Triple Trouble Sub, by the way. Oh yeah, let's throw that out there. Nice. But, you know, just a hint of greatness is sometimes all you need to get by all right, on this trouble, stage. Trouble. I miss that. Miss that, man. So do I. Oh, so do I. Fairy Peak only can pop this one up. There is Zeeb, and he picked a spot just off the post. Norway, we, we said they're not going to be a pushover in this one. They're certainly bringing the fight to France in their own half. And some really mischaracter, uh, mischaracterized misses and uh, whiffs and just general mistakes coming out from France. Well, it's weird because they, they played a series already. Exactly, yeah. They Norway, this cold. is their first game of the day. So France are coming into this with a, with a game under their belts already. Norway, I wouldn't say they're cold, obviously. They've been warming up and uh, having scrims and playing online games and what have you, but not in tournament play and not, certainly not against this French side. So for them to come out and be on top with still two minutes to go in the first game, it's commendable from them. Yeah, I mean, you could argue it'd be disastrous if France did not come out on top out of this playoff bracket. It is, of course, La Fête Nationale as this one heads back towards the French net and seems going to get credit for another. And yet again, it's just a way overcommitted by France. Obviously, they're pushing for that second goal to tie things up. But it's, like I said, it's just very uncharacteristic from France. You don't see that a lot from this side. And they just got muddled in the midfield. And Norway taking advantage of the French mistakes. So it's Norway up three to one. If you had that in your Intel World Open office pool, I congrats. Oh, <laughs> congrats how about for having one? a pool for a start? Yeah, yeah, first of all, yes. Well done. 
Oh, Sieb was looking for Kadoff, did not get him. Trying to chase down Fairy Beak as well. Got the pass off, and oh. Alpha scores! And that's the France we know and love. They're starting to come to life here in this quarterfinal matchup. The one-two punch from Fairy Peak and Alpha. Inferno had absolutely no chance to save that. He just barely get, uh, got to it, but it was a too little too late. And France back within one. And I think Norway, now that France have got that one on the board, they've got to be scared. They need to score. Uh, I'd say Norway needs to score quickly to put France back in a hole. Still a one goal lead, but that can disappear oh so quickly. We have seen France score in bunches, both in this event and of course in the RLCS. Inferno had his pocket Ooh, picked and it's oh. on the goal line and in! Oh, we've seen that so often today. Not, not, never less than that last Netherlands game. So many balls on the goal line and they always ended up out of the net. But Kadoff follows it up and ties it up for France. I said Norway, they needed to be the next to score. France now starting to roll. Can they get another one in the next 60 seconds? Up to the backboard, a whiff though out of the French defense. But look at how far back Norway was. I mean, you just don't expect it and it almost becomes a, a fake by design when it, something catastrophic like that happens. Just takes everyone by a bit of a surprise and no one really knows what to do in those kind of situations. You all just stare at the ball, it's like, okay, I guess I'll go for it. Yeah, it's uh, like, this is vitality, right? They didn't actually just miss that, like, goal yeah. level touch. Oh, okay, oh. all right, that's my ball then. Yeah. Fantastic. But as soon as you've uh, uh, not capitalized on that, as soon as Vitality France m missed that, there, there's always someone coming back in uh, from France to take it away. So you've got to act fast when France make those mistakes. Backboard, Jonas has to get there very quickly and does so, and it's, just a testament to how fast you have to play against Team France. Final seconds ticking away in regulation. We could have yet another overtime. This time, it might be the second for Norway in this tournament as that's popped to the ceiling. We touch down, we go to overtime in game one of our second upper round one match. I think this benefits Norway more than it benefits France because you have that moment to reset, that one minute just stewing over and hoping that France don't score. Now you have this reset off a of kickoff for Norway. As they push it out again, France have been taking this ball away like bullies and just completely hammering this net of the blue side of Norway. But France still, oh, big whiff from Sieb. Luckily enough for him, Fireman Jonas was there to assist. Inferno and Sieb on their way back. Sieb way back near the net. He'll be coming up in a moment to try and play this ball. Does so, got the shot off, and oh. they collided! The two French defenders hit each other. Sieb's got a hat trick, Norway's got a dub. Another uncharacteristic mistake as Kadop just flies in, miscommunication. Who on earth is going for it? Alpha and Kadop said mine at the same time, like the Finding Nemo Seagulls, and they take each other out, and Norway will get a bit of a rubbish goal to end it, but a goal's still a goal, and they take the game. It does not matter by hook or by crook, they will take it. It's a win for Norway in game one, and France has been stunned to start off this series. But again, you know, it's easy to get ahead of ourselves. It is only one game. But that could snow starts to snowball stacks. You get one under yep. your belt, you say, why can't we get another? Why can't we get another? Why can't we sweep France, is Norway saying. As uh, Steve, I know we, we talked a lot about Inferno and Fireman Jonas uh, in the lead up to this game, but look at that from Steve. Three goals, five shots. He's actually popping off for this Norway squad. Yeah, his 10th, 11th, and 12th goals of this tournament up to this point, and maybe many more to come, a hat trick as he gets credit for the game winner. Look, there were a couple goals that you look at France and you go, wait a minute, what? Yeah. Y'all did what? I mean, communication was just poor. Very Which poor. is very uncharacteristic, as you mentioned many times. That did not look like the Team France that we're used to. No, they just don't seem on the same page right now, so maybe Mout gets in their ear during the, that 60 second break and says, hey. He might get on the field. <laughs> he might get on the field. <laughs> put put the coach go. in for Norway as well, but that's the good start for France. That's what you want under your belt to start this second game. Uh, that's three goals for Kadop. It took him a little longer than Sieb to get there, but France will take it. 15 seconds in now to game number two. France trying to get back to some sense of normalcy here. 
try to right the ship. Norway, they want to be steering this boat to a win. You can never count them out. They've always been right there with France. And I've been so impressed with some of these regions and some of these players that uh, we don't generally get to see at the top of the Rocket League tree. That these guys are, uh, are, uh, are, are a decent enough team. And yes, they have been... I, I mean, you got to remember as well, this France side, they're the European champions. They're the champions of Europe in RLCS. And they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe for them. They even have a game off of them. You reach a point in Rocket League, especially at this level, where there is not much of a skill gap. You know, the, the mechanics and the skill doesn't really matter. And you run into chemistry mattering. And Norway, they're a pretty solid team. They've got plenty of chemistry among these three. Jonas hitting Sieb here, and a perfectly placed shot threads the needle and ties the game. Lovely shot by Sieb to tie things up, as you said, Stax. And if France, if that little bit of doubt starts creeping into their minds, saying, are, are we actually going to lose this Norway side? We've seen a lot of complacency from a lot of top teams throughout the closed qualifiers. And this is, you would call France the top team in this bracket as well today. You can never get too far ahead of yourself. You've got to take it one game at a time, one, even one goal at a time. Your France just steady the ship, rate it, and get into that upper final. Alpha can't get that set drill for anybody as Jonas is in the way, but he doesn't have much boost, and that's the skill that's going to be tested for Norway. Oh, that's a miss. whip and an open oh. net miss. It's a tight angle, so you excuse him to an extent, but Norway should absolutely be up 2-1. It really should have been, and again, a big miss on the back line for France. Doesn't come down to a miscommunication that time. That is just a clear and obvious whiff from the defender. And Norway, they've got to be absolutely kicking themselves that they're two they're not two one up right now because they really should be in front if this France showed up about two hours ago Germany would be in this it would be yeah it's a great great point stacks it is a complete is night and day difference between the series earlier against Germany and it's, I even mentioned uh, alongside Tylato if if it went to five games which it uh, eventually did it did all go five games Maybe France a little bit tuckered out. Maybe maybe they'd wanted to get that sweep against Germany, get into this playoff game against Norway, and just be done with it. But it went five games. Maybe they're a little bit, uh, like, like I said, maybe the doubt's creeping in. But that second goal there from France, that will clip quell the nerves a little bit. At one point in the series with France, uh, with Germany, late in that series, Kadoff had only had two shots. Neither had gone in the net. Kadoff is on fire now. Oh, what a shot out of Alpha, beating the defense as well. And now France is here. Snuck it by the keeper as well. Big booming clear by F Fairy Peak in the slightest of touches. I mean, if you're Norway at that point, you're not expecting Alpha to get so much power off of that flick. You just have to watch it sail by your head and watch France go 3-1 up. Two and a half minutes gone, two and a half to go. And, it, and I said it was night and day between the Germany series and the Norway series here for France. It's night and day between now and two minutes ago. If ever a team just epitomized the fact that a game of Rocket League is five minutes, it is France because we've seen them look completely out of their element at times in these first couple of games, but they always sure. find a way to turn it um, right. That one goes way off the mark. Okay. But with a two goal lead, it's you know less damaging as I've, that is blocked out by Inferno. I've seen some weird goals not go in. That was, uh, that's a slam dunk for Alpha. <laughs> if that, uh, you, you see, you see him score things like that all the time. I mean, I, I think it was Rizx earlier earlier on. He whiffed the open net, then scored an absolute worldie. Let's see if Alpha can uh, score one of, of his own, but really should be 4-1 right now. Yeah, a lot of should have in this particular Should've game. Norway absolutely should have one or two more. Here goes Alpha. There you go. High, down ah. hard, 4-1. Of course he scores the worldie after missing the wide open net. Lovely double touch there from Alpha and the tightest of angles there. And again, it's just one that Norway have to watch go in. There's absolutely no way you are defending that, even if you're in the perfect position for it. Flight 54 cleared for takeoff. One way trip into the net. 4-1 now, France has gotten it back. 
And for all their shortcomings in the first, yeah, you, know, you could say nine minutes of this series, it has been money now for France going forward. And we'll see if Norway now can recover because once that field starts sloping downhill towards the opposition's net, this French team does Ooh. not relent. Though Fireman Jonas will score a tight angle shot, one that should have been converted earlier, it's 4-2. All right, don't close the book on this chapter quite yet. There's still a lot of, well, I say a lot of time, there's still plenty of time it's left. An eternity. It's, it's an eternity. 44 seconds in Rocket League. Might as well be 44 minutes because a lot can happen in these crucial seconds as Inferno maybe getting one off kickoff, but skate up, lovely backboard defending by him. Uh, the defense is much better now from France, though. The spacing, of course, is better. You're not seeing, you know, sometimes they get away with double commits. You know, they, you know, it's a very measured approach they have defensively. They are not getting punished at all. They are not making the critical mistakes with double commits Ooh. that they made earlier in this in this series. Down to 13 seconds, and they are not letting Norway even sniff the orange half of the field. Jonas will try to hit Sieb. They got to score now to get a chance at a kickoff goal. Sieb at least got it through, but that last clear will do it. France has tied the series. Yeah, just completely taking the life out of the ball for the last 44 seconds. And France do end up getting that game on the board. So crucial for them if they didn't want to have to reverse sweep against Norway. Because if, if Norway got that one, I don't think there was going to be any stop in them. And I, I, I think you can see there from the, the stats, or at least what we could see, just the life coming yeah, out. Peel back the curtain a little bit. Peel back the curtain. One shot from Fireman Jonas, one from Sieb, three from Inferno. Alpha outscored them all, or outshot them all. Uh, yeah, he matched their goals as well. Two goals from Alpha sure. 54 in that game. I mean, hey, we've, we've gotten on Alpha and KDOP throughout this tournament for not scoring at different points. Alpha all the way up to today. Finally got on the scoreboard. Is he on 50 shots yet? Uh, something like he that. Must he's got to be pretty close, but he's got... Uh, what does he have? Three goals in this series. Kadop's got four tallies. Of course, he had two in the first game, two in the second game to tie things up. Kadop has been steady going here as he is back on form. And now we go to game three. We try to break this one all tie. Somebody's going to be on match point here in this best of five opening round match. And you wouldn't put it past anyone that it's going to be France on match no, point one more not. game because they have started to show why they are the championship caliber team that they have been beca uh, became to have been known in this European region. Why they are the giant killers of BDS in the in the RLCS championships. Why they are they are eternal. They are inevitable. They are vitality. They are France. By the way, yes, Alpha is up over 50 shots. He's got 59, in fact, through the nice. group and playoff stages now. He's got a few goals to show for it now. The percentage just keeps going up because they could not get much lower. Here goes Kadok. <laughs> Gets Fireman Jonas. And He's not going to get back to 50% anytime soon. I believe. You know, let's see it happen. I want to see Alpha score on his next, like, 40 shots and make it happen. <laughs> 40 goals from 40 shots. That would be absolutely ridiculous. Oh, but one Fireman for one Jonas, for Jonas. That's one for one for Jonas, and it puts Norway up early. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Jonas' sweet spot. You give him that shot yeah. on the right wing. I mean, he scored two or three goals Always. so far through this tournament from that spot. You cannot give him that. From that spot, a little bit closer to the corner. It always seems to be on that right-hand side for Joris. He seems so comfortable in that area of the, of the field. So if Seep and uh, if uh, Inferno can just feed Jonas that ball in that right corner, if France aren't catching on to it, it's going to be so deadly. Oh, oh, that's awkward. Oh, Ooh, dear. Hello, it's still dangerous as Kadop shot is stuffed by Inferno and he pops that up so Fairy Peak can't take advantage of it, though he could still get down for that. And now Alpha just lobbing one up there and Inferno has the clear. Yeah, we used to have that data, by the way. This one rings Ooh. off the crossbar. You know, Slock and the guys at Octane used to have uh, for the RLCS and Rival Series uh, the shot chart and you could tell where people were scoring from and what their shooting percentage was. And well, the heat map. Is yeah, and I'm a little sad that that, that shooting like percentage to see a thing has kind of gone by the wayside. I used to love that because I'm a numbers nerd. Yeah, I, be, I bet you if we saw the heat map for Jonas, it would just, uh, just every, 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 everything everything would be ice except that uh, orange right corner. It would just be completely made of lava. <laughs> I mean, he's just well, been tearing it up. Trying to center there. He didn't have any teammates, though, so how good was the pass, really, is Inferno. 
Lob that up, Alpha just over Sieb. Here comes France, uh, Kadoff a little indecisive and Inferno was all over that ball. So again, good proactive defense coming out from Norway as they continue to defend their 1-0 lead. Sieb, oh, look at Sieb. Oh, wow. oh, that was very ambitious. It did not work out. Ambitious, not that rubbish. But, but Sieb, uh, excellent awareness to go up for that ball. Know it's going to pop to him in that area of the field. Kadoff, oh, good challenge onto Sieb on that right-hand side, but Jonas stepping up for his team. He needs to be the one. We said it. Everything, it, or, I think a lot of the offense needs to start going through Jonas. He is the, still the highest rated player on this Norwegian side. And on that right-hand side, yet again, Kadop does block it this time. Inferno is there to run a bit of interference and Sieb. I think that's the smart play. Just get back and play defense. You're one ahead. You don't need to risk it. Fair peak. Stopping this one from getting onto the orange half of the field. Kadop will try as well. Bringing another one back in that Norway has to deal with if they want to stay in front. For all this talk about Norway's lead, we're just into the second half of game three. It feels like they've been defending for four minutes. You just, <laughs> you're waiting for that defense to crack because France, more often than not, find a way. Right now they're hemmed in their own zone as Alpha's got a control deep in his own corner. He goes over Sieb, and he oh, just got a piece of Jonas. And who was Inferno. lining that up for a shot. Yeah, he got Inferno as well. Boy, he saved a disaster, but now a bouncer oh. finds his way in. It's Jonas again. I was going to say it was crucial for Alpha to get that bump on Inferno. Yes, Inferno did go on and get the touch, but he slowed the play down enough. Maybe that threw France off in the end, but Norway holds strong in their positioning. A pass into Jonas and right back into the net. 2 nothing. France on the brink of being down at match point. Still under, just under two minutes to go, and Norway even looking for a third here. Last time Norway had a two goal lead, it went away real quick. The first goal came right about here from France. Fairy Peak just trying to delay by his teammate Simon. Oh, what a touch! Away. Could not redirect it down under the bar. Here goes France. This is how they scored the last time, oh, and it goes in! I think it came off Jonas it as did. well, Stacks. The heartbreaking downfield play. Kadop goes from long range and rattles off and Jonas, yeah, he's just a passenger at that point. Can't correct the mistake as he jumped up for it. It's just, he, it's tough to read that bounce as it comes off the corner. He just read it wrong. It's the same thing that happened in game one though. Norway with a two goal lead. They sent the house again and France got him on the counter attack. This time it was an own goal, but it was followed up immediately with another right around the one minute mark. Now Jonas just launching a missile downfield that Kadoff has to control. And he cannot get around Sieb, who has been spectacular through this whole tournament. This is a breakout performance for Sieb on the Intel World Open stage. Certainly so. He's come to life and has been a real good support character around Inferno and Fireman Jonas. He's had some licks of his own. Can Jonas get one there from the right-hand side yet again? He no, not this time since he was at a boost. And a thing here for Norway, Stacks, they can't afford to be sitting back. They need to be a little bit more aggressive. Obviously have maybe one man back to stop that counter-attack from France. But you cannot afford to sit back and let France attack your net because that is when th uh, this Vitality side are excel. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing too. I mean, they're playing a little passive, but Jonas still downfield. Sieb looking for the knockout blow and Alpha having none of it. But again, Norway, you will not see them overcommit. Now oh, Alpha to the ceiling, faked the ceiling shot initially and then swung in for the shot. It was saved. Now down to 15 seconds, Sieb trying to drop it off back to Inferno. They beat the defense and Jonas, Jonas. saves the game. 2-1 still with seven to go. Kadoff looking for another equalizing. Oh, 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 oh. Captain Clutch does it again. Championship Kadoff coming to light, but the setup from Alpha was clinical and clinical drop down from Kadoff puts them back at level pegging with four seconds to go. Overtime bearing down on this Norwegian side and they have got to be feeling so deflated from that. They were four seconds away from match point and here in zero seconds as well, they just have to put that into the floor. If they could see it on zero seconds, oh, I don't know what would have happened to them. If the Monstars ever challenged Earth and Rocket League, you would start with that man, Kadoff, as Alpha lobs one to the net and it's saved away by Sieb. Norway. Trying to recover now after they tried to hold that lead for so long. The shot whistles wide and is saved by Alpha. 
Nobody's going to be over there on the other side as Jonas is way downfield. I thought the even center line. I thought he was going to be a little bit closer than that. He saw it flying over right into his comfort spot on that right hand side of the field, but he was trapped in midfield trying to recover, boost by the looks of things. Very uh, errant pass over to uh, over to that side of the field. Just gave possession back to France for Norway. And a big booming clear has Norway in business on the French half of the field. Inferno on his way back trying to avoid Sieb. That was a little awkward for the Norwegians as now Fireman Jonas will try. And Kate up, whiffed on it, but Alpha is right there and he can take over. He's got by Inferno. Flip reset to get through Sieb. Here comes Fairy Pete to continue to play and then he backs off. Everybody from France all the way back reading that that was going to be a power clear. Power clear after power clear, but what did I say earlier, Stax? You cannot afford to sit back and let France have this ball in their own possession. As Inferno misses on the post, it drops for Alpha, and France go to match point. A catastrophic mistake from Norway. Inferno has to have that ball, and France capitalizes on a huge mistake from Norway. And the overtime goes the way of France this time, and more importantly, two games to one now in the series. But what can you do at this at this stage of the game, Stacks? When if you're uh, Norway, you've just lost uh, you lost the lead at four seconds to go. You're that close to sending yourself to one against what everyone who everyone's expecting to win this entire tournament. You had a chance to knock them into the lower bracket. You concede at four seconds, and now at, in overtime you concede again. And now you've got to win two in a row if you want to have a chance uh, at, at redemption to stay in this upper bracket and have that extra life. More importantly, because remember, if you get to the grand final through this upper bracket, you have to just win one best of five. Whereas if you go into the lower bracket, it's a bracket reset. You need to win two of them. Yeah, it's so critical to get ahead here for Norway early in this upcoming game. If they drop this game to France, they go down to the lower bracket and they face a team in Great Britain who, yes, they just took their licks against the Netherlands, but they swept Norway the last time they faced off. Could be a similar fate waiting for them in the lower bracket with their tournament life on the line. France looking for another shot at the Netherlands and oh my goodness, what a matchup that oh. would be after we watched them play a five game epic in the group stage. That re that match yesterday, Stacks, could have gone either way. It did end up falling France's way, 1-0 in game five yesterday. And if it goes to game five again, if we even see that match again, I cannot wait for it. But that's in the future. This is the here and now. Norway needing this game to send them to game five to stave off the lower bracket run. And if you want to, if you want to stay off uh, a game against Team GB right now, because them losing in that upper bracket game, they're going to be so mad. Tylacto not with us here, but he's certainly helping us out. 83% goal participation for Sieb going into that last game. And he's out of the picture here as Inferno sets up Jonas and adds another. Yeah, we said Sieb is starting to step up in 83% goal participation. That might be the, I believe that might be the highest throughout the entirety of the Intel World Open. We'll have to double check yeah, that. They cooled off in that last game. Yeah, a, lo a little bit, shots. a little bit. But Fireman Jonas opening up the account with a bang and they, I think they needed to score first and needed to score early as well if they if they kept at an even pace if they kept if maybe France scored at like three minutes two and a half minutes to go Norway may have just had the life just drained out of them the wind just sucked out of their lungs but they have the opener they have the upper hand Alpha up high, got it on top, oh! and Kate up slams it home, and they're right back level. Talk about having the upper hand, France. That's one way to get yourselves back into this one. Lovely touch by Alpha, and Kate up just to finish it up with a kiss right into the French, uh, into the. Into the Norwegian net, not the yes. French net, not the other net. That's uh, we, we've seen France put the ball into the French net in this series. It's not great, but it worked out this time on the Norway half of the field. Seven goals in this series for Kadoff. Yeah, okay, he's put a few in at point blank range, but is that good enough for you now? Like, my goodness. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I've gotten real tired 
of seeing people say Kadoff's on the decline. I just look at his performance huh? in the. Who's saying that? Are, are you European reading it? Nobody, are you reading who knows a silly darn people thing about the internet? I can tell you that. Oh. Seven goals. Sierra performed just. It was. <laughs> It was vintage K-Dop in the RLCS X Championships, and it's vintage K-Dop now when his team needs him the most. K-Dop washed? Never. No, he's still on top of his game. Timeless. He is absolutely timeless. Absolutely great great way to describe it. He's uh, going to be around this top, the top of this European scene for a long, long time to come. <laughs> K-Dop washed? I've never heard anything more silly. You're silly, Stacks. Or at least the people you've heard yeah. on the internet are silly. Yeah, no, I, I have this bad habit of reading a lot of not smart people. Here goes Mary <laughs> Peak. Down to the corner. Fireman Jonas Peak booming clear. Back to the French half of the field as Norway's got to scramble to get back into this series. They're tied up in game four, but the momentum squarely on the side of Team France. And so is the attack. Kate up. Going to bail out of the play here, back to the center line. Here goes Fairy Peak now, looking for contact, trying to run interference. And now here's the Grim Reaper. Nobody went up to challenge oh. him, and he picked him apart. As hard as Norway have tried to defend, it's just that one touch there by Inferno, and the K-Dop comes right out of nowhere and bangs that one straight through. You, you, I, I saw that one trickling towards K-Dop, I'm like, he's going to score. Yep. He's, uh, there's absolutely no chance he's not putting that in the back of the net. As we go right past halftime, maybe even Seab off a kickoff to tie it up. Can't stop the K-Dop, though. Second half now of the final game of this series, unless Norway can find a way to score at least a couple. Inferno up to the sky, and he got around K-Dop, but he did his job. Inferno had to kind of give up possession to get by him. And now Fireman Jonas all out of boost, couldn't get the steal away from Alpha. And there's Fairy Peak again, stifling Norway at the center line. Alpha to k again, oh. but he just missed it high. Numbers advantage back the other way, two on one. one. Inferno is stopped by Fairy Peak. Oh, Inferno, Inferno had a run there, but again, you saw k -Dop just he's, he's in his form now. He's in his championship form as k -Dop just lurking in the middle, expecting either Alpha or Fairy Peak to just feed him the ball. And feed him they are. And k -Dop feasting on this Nor Norwegian defense in this Norwegian net. Still under, still only a one goal game, although oh, Fairy Peak could change that in an instant. Inferno saves his bacon. Uh, k -Dop and Sieb ran into each other. Now Jonas can try to get Norway back on the board. He's gonna need help from Sieb across the way. Alpha not deterred at all by Sieb trying to jump in front of him. Inferno couldn't get the pass cleanly out in front. So Jonas will take over for Norway. Final minute of this match, unless Norway have an answer. Inferno looking for Sieb, not quite gonna find him. It's Fairy Peak up there first. And again, that's the game sense of Fairy Peak. And there are very few teams in this whole tournament in any region that are better closers than France. In fact, yeah. I'm having a hard time thinking of one. Yeah, uh, they, they just seem to close everything out. I know we saw some of the Indonesian teams, uh, me, myself and Tyler were saying, oh, they get the lead and then lose it within 20 seconds. France, they are all relief pitchers in their own right. Closing things out in 20 seconds to go. Just keeping this ball, playing Peggy in the middle with Fra uh, with the Norwegian's flares. May even get a third to seal it. Sieb almost turns it in by himself, but it's still France with possession. Five seconds, all that remains for Norway in the upper bracket. Fairy Peak just gonna spike it down and France comes back. They battle adversity and are moving along the upper bracket.